so today we're working on a small block Chevy. Uh, this one in particular is for a 1969 Camaro. Uh, that car is in for a complete restoration. The owner was just looking for a weekend cruiser. Uh, he's not concerned about all-out power and fuel economy. So we're just going to go through building this thing and give you some basic tips on a small block Chevy. First thing when you build an engine, obviously, is setting it to the machine shop. Have everything checked out, machine squared up, whatever's necessary for what's happened to your engine along the years. Uh, after we got those in back, uh, one of the first things I like to do on a two-piece rear main is uh, check how the rear main seal fits in the lip between the block and the cap. Uh, so we're putting together a 350 small block for one of our Camaro projects in the shop. And uh, this is an older block. It's got a two-piece main and two-piece mains are notorious for leaking. Uh, one of the reasons is actually all in the installation method. A lot of times people put it in here and they set it flush with the block. Well, the problem with that is if it's flush with the block and then it's flush with the cap, these two pieces may not line up like they should. So if you give it just a little bit of a twist like this, then the block and the cap have to line up. There's no way that the seal can be misaligned where the two pieces meet. So this is the main cap with our bearing shell already installed. This is the other half of the rear main seal. So you want to do the same thing here. Just offset it a little bit. So that way when you go to put it together, put the crank in there, those two offset pieces, they're forced to line up by the lip on the block and the cap. By bridging that gap with the main seal, it ensures the seal itself is aligned with both halves. All right, so we got our main bearing shells and our crank sitting in here. Uh, the next thing to do is a good, always a good idea, but not 100% necessary if you've had a machine shop do the work, is to plasti gauge the bearings. So you use this stuff. It comes in different sizes, uh, which are color coded for the amount of clearance you need. And uh, what this does is inside this sleeve is this little bitty plastic sort of string. Just take a chunk of it set on your bearing like that. We'll put the bearing caps on, torque them to spec, and then we'll pull them back off and you compare how wide the, uh, the string is to this gauge here and it gives you an idea of what the bearing clearance is. And you look up your bearing clearance in your assembly manual for this engine or uh, whatever your engine builder recommended and make sure everything's right. On this build we're using ARP hardware. Uh, ARP stuff is really high quality. It's developed specifically for racing and high performance use. Uh, and they have a complete line of bolts for just about anything. Uh, one of the important things to keep in mind whenever you buy ARP fasteners is if it's supplied with the washer, you need to use the washer. And you see in here there's this bevel. That always needs to go towards the bolt head. The other thing to keep in mind is ARP sends a pouch of their assembly fluid with all their bolts, uh, or if you put a lot of things together, you can buy it individually in these tubes. And you want to apply some to the threads, and you want to apply some to the bolt head or the washer. That way, when you're torquing it down, you're going to get the same readings that they got. And when you torque a bolt, you're measuring the, the amount of force you're putting on the bolt to get an idea of how much the bolt is stretched, and therefore creating a spring to lock it in place. Uh, when you torque down an ARP bolt, or any bolt for that matter, you don't want to torque it all the way to the maximum spec on the first try. Uh, the reason for that is all these machine surfaces around this cap are pretty tight tolerance, so you want to pull it down evenly. If you pull this side all the way down, and then you try to pull this side down, you can distort things, as well as get improper torque readings, and therefore the bolts aren't going to stay as tight like they're supposed to. Uh, ARP recommends three equal steps. Uh, so it's pretty simple. You start about a third of the way from your total. Uh, in this case, we're doing 70 foot-pounds at the end. So we'll start around 25 and we'll work our way up. A lot of times when you're building an engine, you got to torque something down and then take it back apart to check it, especially bearing clearances. Uh, a lot of torque wrenches have a reverse setting. Well, that's not really for breaking stuff loose. It's for the off chance you have a left-hand thread. Uh, you always want to use a breaker bar, ratchet, air tool of some sort to loosen your bolts. That way you're not wearing out the calibration or damaging your torque wrench using it to loosen things. After going through the procedure to plastic gauge the bearings, we found that all the bearings were within spec. 
And this is a really critical thing to check because sometimes the machine shop misses and uh, things as little as a thousand have caused us to tear an engine back apart. So, see here that that plastic string, plastic gauge, has been squished and now it's much wider than it was because it was right there at the end how wide it was when we started. So then you just compare it to what we see here. So it's a little wide two thousands, a little less than one and a half. So that's within the spec of what we want to have here. Uh, if this was not in spec, as in the plastic gauge was too narrow or too wide compared to what the specifications for your engine call for, that could be a couple problems. Uh, the bearing clearance being too large, you're not going to have good oil pressure and the engine's not going to last very long. If it's too tight, uh, the bearing could score or worst case it could spin and that would cause the oil hole to not line up and the bearing would not get any more oil and you have an engine come apart pretty quickly. Whenever you're assembling an engine it's important to use a quality assembly lubricant to protect all the moving parts prior to startup. Uh, on a small block Chevy and a lot of older engines you can prime the oil pump before you ever have to turn the motor over but on newer engines, like LS's and a bunch of Fords and Chrysler's, the oil pump's driven by the crankshaft, so there's no way to prime the oil mechanically short of cranking the engine over. Uh, we prefer to use Royal Purple's Max Tough. It's a synthetic assembly lubricant that's designed just for all those sorts of situations. A lot of times with building an engine, less is more, except in the case of assembly lubricant. I'd rather see it running out of the bottom of the motor while we're putting it together than not have enough. After we installed the crankshaft, the next big step is to install the pistons and rods into the cylinders.